Hey guys, welcome back to part 3 of the app widget tutorial. So in part 1 we created our simple widget. In part 2 we added a configuration activity, where we can do an initial setup when we place our widget on the home screen. And in part 3 we will learn how we can change the layout of our widget depending on its dimensions. For this we will add this text label here, which will only appear if the height of our widget is big enough to make enough room. When we make it small, it gets invisible. And we will take a look at the other callback methods that will be triggered when we add or delete a widget from the home screen. And just as a reminder, you can find all my videos, code examples and blog posts on codinginflow.com. Okay, let's go into our project and into our example app widget provider Java class. So far we only implemented this on update method. And as I explained before, this will be called the first time we place our widget on the home screen. And then periodically at the time that we defined in this example app widget info XML file, as the update period millis attribute. Every 2.6 million milliseconds or every one hour in our example. According to the documentation, the onUpdate method will not be triggered the first time we place the widget on the home screen if we have a configuration activity. But if you test this with log messages or toast messages, you notice that the onUpdate method still gets called. So the documentation is not completely correct here. Now this doesn't really change anything for us, but just to keep it in mind. And additionally to this onUpdate method, there are more callback methods that we can override, which will be called at different points in the lifecycle of our widget. We have on app widgets options changed. We have on deleted, on enabled, and on disabled. On deleted is pretty self-explaining. This will be called every time we delete a widget from the home screen. On enabled will be called when we place our first widget on the home screen, but not for any additional one. So if you place two or three or more widgets on the home screen, this will only be called for the first one. And vice versa on disabled will only be called when we delete the last widget from our home screen. So these two methods are where you do an initial setup like opening and closing a database for example. Since these three methods are very specific to your particular use case, we won't implement an actual functionality in this example, we will just show a toast message instead to see when they are triggered. We can delete the super part because it's empty anyways. Toast on disabled, the same in on enabled, toast, on enabled, and in on deleted. The method we want to take a closer look at in this example is on app widget options changed, because this will be called every time we resize our widget, as you saw in the example at the beginning. And here we get past this bundle new options. This contains the dimensions of our widget after we change the size. We don't need the super part here either. But the same as in our onUpdate method, we need an instance of remote views. Because if you remember, our widget is in a different process than our app, so we cannot access them directly. Instead, we have to access the layout over the remote views. We call it views again, equals new remote views. And the same as before, we pass context.getPackageName and the layout of our widget, r.layout.examplewidget. And now we want to use this remote views instance to change the layout of our widget depending on its size. There are four different dimension values that we can get out of this bundle. The first one is the min width, which we get with new options dot get int. And here we have to pass a key for which we have to pass a constant app widget manager dot option app widget min width. The next is the max width. I will explain what these values exactly mean in a moment. Again, we get them from our new options, dot get int. Again, we have to pass a constant. And min height. And lastly, max height. Now don't get confused that we get four different values for only two different dimensions. This is because we have different values depending if the device is in portrait or landscape mode. If the device is in portrait mode, the dimensions are the min width and the max height. Again, min width, but max height. If the device is in landscape mode, it's max width and min height. Now most devices show the home screen in portrait mode, so the values we mostly care for are min width and max height. And in our example, we only want to change the layout when the height changes, so we only care for this max height value. But let's just show all these values in a toast message, so we see how they change when we resize our widget. For this, I create a string, 
which I call dimensions, and then I just build a string, min width, colon space, and a min width value, plus, then I make a line break like this, max width, colon space, plus max width, plus backslash n for line break again, min height, colon space, plus min height, plus backslash n, max height, colon space, plus max height. And now we simply uh, display the string in the toast message. So we pass the dimension string as the text. And now when we resize our widget, we will see how these values change. But let's change the length of this toast message to length long, so we see it a bit longer. And now we place one of our widgets on the home screen. And when we put it there, we should see our unenabled toast message. On enabled, we can type in the text. And now when we resize it, we should see our toast message with the dimensions. And there they are. And they change when we resize the widget. As you can see, the width stays the same. But of course, the height changes. When we resize it like this, the width changes. Now, as I said, we care for the max height. So when our widget is like this, the height is 89. Those are dp values, by the way, not pixels. And now it's 195 and 89. So let's say we want to display our label when our height is higher than 100 dp, which is the case when we have it like this. So let's go back into code. First, of course, we have to change the layout of our widget. So we go into our example widget XML file. And here we want to add this text view. So we go above, opening angle bracket text view, wrap content width and height. Gonna add the text, my widget or whatever you want. We make the text bigger with the text appearance attribute. And I'm gonna pass this one, add style text appearance app combat large which changes not only the size, but also the text color. I will also set the background color to white, like this, so it's better visible. And now we put it above our button here. And we start our widget when it's small, so we want to make it invisible by default. Visibility, but instead of invisible, I'm gonna choose gun, so it's completely away. But to have this text view visible in the preview here, we write to its colon. Now this is red, so we press Alt Enter which will add this tools namespace. And now we take tools colon visibility and set this to visible. So this tools attribute is only for the editor here. In our actual app, the visibility will be gone. Our text needs an ID as well because we need a reference to it later in Java code. Android colon ID at plus ID slash. And we call it example underscore widget underscore text. Now back into our example app widget provider class. We go into our on app widgets option change method again. And we said that we want to make this label visible when our max height is bigger than 100 dp. So we simply check if max height is bigger than 100. And again, we can't access our views directly. We have to do it with our remote views, which are our use variable dot set view visibility. Here we pass the ID to our text viewer, other ID dot example widget text and the value, which is view dot visible. Else, which means the max height is not bigger than 100, we do the same, view.setViewVisibility view visibility, example widget text, but this time we want to set it back to gun. And the same as in our on update method, we have to take our app widget manager, which we get passed by this method, call.update widget, pass the app widget ID, because this is the widget we are changing, and our remote use. And that's already it. Let's test it. So now when we resize the widget, we should see our label. And there it is. When we make it small, it should disappear again. And it does. When we change the width, it shouldn't have any effect on it. And it doesn't. Nice. But we are not done yet. If you remember from the last video, we had to recreate our widget in an update. We loaded our button text from shared preferences. And we set the pending intent again. Otherwise, our widget would be set back to its default appearance as soon as an update is called. And the same is the case for the changes we just made in our on-app widget's option changed method. 
when we make our text reusable, we also have to recreate this state in our unupdate method. But this time we don't have to save this value in shared preferences because our app widget manager contains the same bundle as we have in our on app widgets option change method with the four different dimensions in it. So we can retrieve it like this bundle. We call it app widget options equals app widget manager dot get app widget options. And we have to pass the app widget ID like this. And now we want to do the same as we did in our on app widget options changed method. We want to make the text visible depending on the size of the widget. Now if we put all of this stuff in here, we have duplicate code. So let's put this into a separate method. Below our on app widgets option change method here, we create a private void resize widget method. And it will take the bundle app widget options as input and the remote viewers views because it needs these two to make changes on the widget. Curly braces. So what do we want to do in here? We want to retrieve our four values so we can cut this part out, paste it in our resize widget method. But this time the bundle is not called new options, it's called app widget options. So let's change this. We don't need the string here anymore, so we delete this. And we want to make our changes to the visibility, so we cut out this whole if else part as well and paste it below. Now actually we could delete these three values here because we don't need them, but I will keep them in so you can take a look at the code later. And now in our on app widget option change method, we want to call our resize widget method before we call update widget. That's important. And here we pass our new options because this is the bundle with our app widget options in it. And we pass our remote views, which we create above it, which is important as well. Okay, nice. And we are almost done. So now let's go back into our on update method where we want to recreate our widget. We retrieve the app widget option bundle here. And below we call our resize widget method where we pass our app widget options and our remote views. Below that we call update app widget, which will apply the changes to our widget. Now to test that this works, I'm gonna make this widget bigger, so we have our label. And now when I restart the app, it should call our onUpdate method because it actually also gets triggered when we make changes to our app widget class. To confirm that onUpdate is called, let's show a toast message here as well, which we simply say onUpdate. And now let's run it again. And there's onUpdate and our widget is recreated. And now when we delete our widget, we should see on deleted and on disabled. On deleted, on disabled. Nice. If this was helpful, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe for upcoming parts of the app widget tutorial. Take care.